high. I work with teachers all the time. And if you were those teachers, then you'd be telling me what you know for sure. Like students aren't interested in learning math or achievement gaps, they're gonna always be around. And only a few students will really need math in their life. What you know for sure is that a lot of our kids need remedial instruction. But don't worry because math is easy for some kids. Now what kids know for sure can be summarized by Calvin, who says, you know, I don't think math is a science, I think it's a religion. <laughs> a religion, asks Hobbes, yeah, all these equations are like miracles. <laughs> you take two numbers and when you add them, they magically become one new number. No one can say how it happens. You either believe it or you don't. <laughs> this whole book is full of things that have to be accepted on faith. It's a religion. And then the public schools, no less, says Hobbes, call a lawyer. And Calvin replies, as a math atheist, I should be excused from this. <laughs> but unfortunately, all too many of our kids try to excuse themselves from studying high quality mathematics. And all too many of you accept their excuses because of what you know for sure. You say things like, it doesn't matter what I teach. It doesn't matter what I say or how I do it. They're not going to get it. It really doesn't matter anyway. You say that it really doesn't matter. You say it doesn't matter because only a few kids would need problem-solving skills in life. It doesn't matter because those successful kids, they have that aptitude. It doesn't matter. Relig rigorous instruction is not for everyone, and it damages kids who aren't ready for it. It really doesn't matter. These kids are at risk because they are poor and disadvantaged. They're at risk of dropping out, so they need remediation. These kids are at risk because their families don't give them the support they need at home to be successful. But you know what? I say it does matter. It does matter that kids actively engage meaningful mathematical tasks because doing so will significantly impact their ability to do math well. It matters. That's important because black, I'm sorry, hashtag <laughs> math lives matter. All students deserve the chance to learn high-quality mathematics. And although we may not know all the best ways to make this happen, you need to be concerned about one important thing, and that is what you know for sure. So tell me, what is it that you know for sure? Is it that although you don't know how to use data to make placement decisions, you do know for sure that most minority students are not ready for advanced courses and are at risk because of their lack of preparation? Well, students are at risk, I would have to agree. They are at risk from us. Because what you see in this slide is that high-performing kids don't get access to the best courses you have available to them in your schools. You don't give them a chance to continue to be successful. These kids are at risk if they're black. These kids are at risk if they're Latino. These kids are at risk because of what you know for sure. But I ask again, what is it that you know for sure? Is it that although you don't know how to implement culturally relevant pedagogy, you do know for sure that there are differences among demographic groups that aren't easily overcome. And achievement gaps just merely reflect those differences. Well, if you look at the percentage of students in one situation at or above grade level at end of course math testing, you do see a, a schism between black and brown students and between white and Asian students. And we tend to call that an achievement gap. But in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, that gap existed. But what about in 5th grade? That gap at 5th grade, well, it wasn't much of a gap at all. In fact, I would say that what happened in this situation wasn't anything but tracking. Tracking caused that situation. Kids no longer got access to the course. 85% of the high-performing black and Latino kids weren't given access to the course they needed to be successful. So to put it another way, we created that achievement gap. Now, what you have to understand is it doesn't have to be that way. We can change that. Just give all kids, certainly high-performing kids, access to the best course that you have, and when you do that, you'll see that achievement will line up really well. We can change that, or are you sure that we can? What is it that you know for sure? Is it that although you don't know how to implement rigorous mathematics instruction, you do know for sure who should have access to them? Well, one case in point I would give you is this. 
at a, high, at a middle school that I saw 50 kids who weren't given access to high quality math, even though they met the criteria, these minority and low income students, when we did convince them to get access, 100% of them were successful. The best kid in all of them was one of those kids, while even half of those 50 didn't even take pre algebra. Well, I want you to know there's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things you don't know about teaching math. But I want you to leave here with this it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so.